with Rachel, I think. So given the right-wing media onslaught against um, Corbyn seen in recent years, how do you think that <coughs> Labour could um, counteract this in the next general election? And obviously in the last general election we had um, approximately 40% of 18 to 24-year-olds um, not voting. So how, what, what, what can we do about that and how can perhaps social media um, and mainstream media play a part in encouraging young votes? Right. Um, yeah. So I, I'm going to talk generally about that um, in terms of, because I'm a journalist that floats around across print media and, and broadcast media as well. And what, one of the most striking things for me when I started moving more from print into broadcast was how much print drives the broadcast news cycle. Um, so I'm quite regularly reviewing the, the papers, you know, tomorrow's papers in the evening before for Sky and for BBC. And, you know, obviously the front pages of those newspapers are driving the, the conversation for half an hour. And if the majority of those newspapers skew right, then you've got a built-in problem because then you're always, all your questions, all the talking points, all the, all the debate is driven uh, rightwards. And you're constantly on the defensive and you never have an opportunity to discuss the sort of policies, the sort of socio-economic program that Labour has, precisely the sort of thing that would appeal to those young voters that you're talking about. Um, you just don't get that opportunity because they're not on the front pages. And I remember I was going through for a while <laughs> Um, you know, in the last couple of years uh, and in the, in the year leading up to the general election in 2017 especially, you know, you'd look at, you'd, you'd look at the observer and you'd go, okay, you're the, you're the one that's not right wing. Give me something to work with, you know, every Saturday night. Give me something. And then it would be, you know, labour infighting and, or, you know, all those kind of things, which of course is a thing. Um, you know, there's an argument for maybe not allowing that to be in the news in the first place, witness the last few days, um, but it does mean that you're constantly um, on the back foot and you don't really get an opportunity to uh, air those policies. And the thing is that those policies are popular. Um, so I think one of the things that uh, Labour has done and is quite useful in that context is to if you can launch things that um, actually are quite provocative. So I think the school, private schools policy is quite interesting in that respect. But I remember during the general election, you know, um, when Labour announced that it was gonna tax uh, people earning over 80,000 pounds. And then it had to announce that actually that was, you know, that was a top 5% and then had to announce that was people earning over 80K. And you know, the entire media village went, that's not very much. And everyone else on the streets was like, 80,000 a year is a huge amount of money. It's more than any of us will ever aspire to earn in our lifetimes. What are you talking about? And so that kind of confrontation, that kind of conversation, I think plays really well for Labour because it's, the contrast is so glaring. The, the detachment is quite evident. Um, so I think policies that are presented in that way are quite useful for Labour. Thank you very much.